I'm Robin Clevett. Um, just a quick, this is a selfie video now as um, Roger's away, so um, I just thought I'd give you a selfie video because everyone says to me, why don't you film anything uh, in between them coming and, and tell us what's going on? Because a lot can happen in a couple of weeks. So um, I'm doing the exterior cladding now of the, of the summer house. You can see that there's the side there, it's got a um, counter batten on there and also at the very bottom you can see that there's a black ventilation strip. That basically enables air to pass up the bottom of the cladding and then aerate the area between the cladding and the building. A lot of people don't do this because they argue the fact that it's, if it's tongued and grooved and you allow the couple of mil expansion joint, it's breathing all the time. But it's good practice to allow an air an airspace. And I think a lot of people recommend up to 40 mil of airspace. So if you're doing vertical cladding, it's fine because you'll cross batten everything and you'll get 50 mil if you're using a 25 mil batten. But equally, I'm using a 25 mil batten here because I just don't want the build up to be too big. I've actually clad the whole rear of the building and the other side. As you can see, you've got the battening on there and then lower down, you've got the ventilation and you can see all my services coming up here. So I'm actually going to build a little housing on the outside of this to, to accommodate those. Okay, moving around to the front, if we show you the front, mainly glass, but there is another area of cladding here which we're just working on. Now, I just wanted to sort of show you a bit of a technique here. When you're using a tongue groove board and you've got to start at the bottom, in the ideal world you want to ping every line and you want to course them so the cover of this board is 110 millimeters that means that that's the position it tra that's the distance it travels as a row every time it goes up even though it doesn't measure that because that allows for the two mil gap what people have a tendency to do when they're clad in is to jam it all together and the thing is timber is naturally going to undulate as soon as they machine it and it dries out and it's treated it's going to move so you've got to pull it and push it straight so the key result there is actually pinging some datum lines across so what I do is laborious trying to do the whole lot so I do a combination of every fourth course I, I string a line and then I use a small gauge stick like this I'm just going to hold it up this is my gauge stick and on it it's got a series of measurements and basically so off my datum line here that sits on there and butts down against the cladding and then you can repeat the process and carry on up the, up the wall okay so inside I've got a little workshop set up here so I've got my uh, bench saw for doing rips I've got my chop saw for cutting cross cuts and then I've got a little simple contraption so the um, saw is screwed down to this ply which is on the stools and then I've got a length of timber longer than the cladding with a stop on it so where I've got a series of lengths like I am on the front I've got 21 lengths exactly the same I was able to source material long enough to do all of the cladding in the most economical fashion which is really really key the last thing you want to do is be just cutting it all back and having loads of off cut and waste so what we end up here, we've got 5.1 meter length. So this side that I'm doing at the moment is about 4.650. So I've got this contraption set up here. Everything's fixed together and there's a stop on the end. So I put a square end on, flip it round and then chop it to length. It's just fantastic because at least then I can just t cut and fix. There's no messing around. There's no measuring after the first piece is measured and put in. So it actually speeds the process up. I would say by it's double as quick. So I just thought I'd share that with you before I carry on. Looks like it's going to rain. <laughs> 